everyone. Today we're gonna be talking about the outsider. We're gonna be discussing the main characters and the secondary and obstructing and helpful characters. So for the main characters, we firstly have Pony Boy. Now Pony Boy is the youngest of the Curtis family. He is creative, caring, likes to read, and likes to watch sunsets. Next we have Daryl, or his nickname Derry. He is the oldest of the Curtis brothers. He's serious, strict, but Pony Boy finds out also caring. Soda Pop is the second oldest of the Curtis brothers. He is fun, loving, and a dropout. Next we have Johnny. Now Johnny, abused by his parents, is shy, little brother of the gang. And finally we have Dally. He is independent, tough when he wants to be, but also caring, especially towards Johnny. Now for the secondary characters, we firstly have Sandy, who is Soda Pop's girlfriend. We have Cherry Valance, uh, she is a sock cheerleader and Bob's girlfriend, whom Pony Boy meets at the movies. Marcia is Randy's girlfriend and Cherry's friend, who gets along with Two Bit. Two Bit, whose real name is Keith, is a wisecracking joker of Pony Boy's group, the Greasers, who frequently shoplift. Next, we have Steve, who is Soda Pop's best friend since elementary school. Steve is a 17-year-old greaser who works with Soda Pop at the gas station. And then we have Randy Anders, Bob's best friend and Marcia's boyfriend. Randy is a handsome sock who eventually sees the pointlessness of fighting after Pony Boy saves those children from the fight. Then we have Mr. Syme, who is Pony Boy's English teacher, who assigns the semester theme that becomes the outsiders. And then we have Jerry Wood. And Jerry Wood is one of the school teachers who was picnicking with the children when the caught when the church caught on fire. And lastly we have David, who is a sock who tries to drown Pony Boy in the fountain. Next we have the helpful versus obstructive characters. The helpful characters we see Cherry Valence of course because she was a spy for the greasers uh, to help get the information around about the socks and really just the greasers themselves as Pony Boy is the protagonist. Uh, then we have the obstructing characters. We have obviously the socks, including Bob Sheldon, Randy Anderson, David, Paul Holden, and Greg Parker. The other characters that you may notice they're not in this are really just neutral characters who don't have a helpful side or an obstructing side. There are three main relationships that I believe are vital to summarize this story. So first of all, we have the relationship between Derry and Pony Boy. Now, their relationship is a love-hate relationship. Even though Derry slapped Pony Boy, this still emphasizes how much Derry worries and thinks about Pony Boy, especially after the event with the socks happening in the beginning of the book. The relationship between Pony Boy and Randy develops throughout the book. From being indirect enemies to each other based on their classes, Graces versus Socks, to Randy not joining in on the rum rumble, leaving the town, and recognizing each other not by class, but by opportunity. Friends. And finally, the relationship between Pony Boy and Soda Pop is a beautiful, empathetic relationship. Pony Boy says in the novel, Soda Pop rarely reads the book. However, Soda Pop understands Pony Boy and is then able to empathize with him. Pony Boy describes Soda Pop as being happy go luck and says that he is constantly smiling. So, firstly, Pony Boy gets jumped. So, on his way home from the movie theater, a car comes up to Pony Boy and five socks come out. They start beating him up. Soon, Pony, Pony Boy's brothers, Derry and Soda Pop, and the rest of the gang come and chase the socks away. Now, the second event is we have the drive in. So, Pony Boy, Dally, and Johnny go to the drive in movies. They meet Cherry and her friend, Marcia. Dally gets mad because Johnny tells him to stop bothering Cherry. Cherry and Marcia invite Johnny and Pon Pony Boy to sit with them for the rest of the movie. Next, Derry hits Pony Boy. Pony Boy doesn't get home until very late. Derry gets angry and slaps Pony Boy. Pony Boy has never been hit before, so he ran off. Pony Boy found Johnny and told him that they were going to run away, but they decided to go to the park first to cool off before they did anything crazy. 
Next, we have the fight at the park. So while Johnny uh, po and Pony Boy are at the park, the socks approach them. Two of them are Randy and Bob, who are Cherry and Marcia's boyfriends. They were mad at Pony Boy and Johnny for being with their girlfriends. Socks start the socks start to insult them, and in anger, Pony Boy spits at them. The socks get mad and they try to drown Pony Boy in the fountain. Pony Boy passes out, and when he wakes up, he realizes that all the socks are gone, and Bob is dead. He soon finds out that Johnny stabbed Bob since he was hurting Pony Boy. Next, the church catches on fire. Now, Dally comes to visit the boys. He takes them out for lunch. When they return, they find the church on fire. They were in. They, there were adults in panic, saying that some children were missing and that they were in the church. Pony Boy and Johnny go into the burning church to try to save the children. After the last child was saved, the church roof collapses and crushes Johnny. They go to the hospital. Pony Boy finds out that Dally will be okay. He also finds out that Johnny isn't doing very well. Soda Pop and Dairy come to the hospital to see Pony Boy. Soda Pop and Pony hug. Then Pony Boy sees Dairy crying. Pony Boy realizes that Dairy really cared about him. That was the reason he was so hard on Pony Boy. All Pony Boy's anger went away, and he and Dairy also hug. Next. Randy and Pony Boy talk. Randy tells Pony Boy that he's not going to fight in the rumble. He also tells him more about Bob, who was his very best friend. This is when Pony Boy realizes that Randy wasn't just a sock, he was a person too. He realizes that everyone also has problems too. Next, the rumble. The rumble was a fight between the socks and the greasers. If the socks won, everything would stay the same. If the greasers won, the socks would have to stay out of their territory. The Greasers ended up winning the fight because the Socks retreated and ran away. Next, a very tragic event, Johnny dies. After the Rumble, Pony Boy and Dally visit Johnny in the hospital to tell him that they won the Rumble. When they got there, the doctor tells them that Johnny is dying. Once they get into his room and tell him that they won, Johnny tells them that fighting is no good. He also tells Pony Boy to stay gold. Then, Johnny dies. Next, Dally dies. After Johnny dies, Dally gets very upset. Johnny was the only thing he loved. He stormed out of the hospital. When he, when Pony Boy gets home, Dally calls and says that he just robbed the store, and the police are after him. The police catch up with Dally, and the, then the gang arrives. Dally points his gun at the police. The police shoots him, and Dally dies. Everyone knew that he wanted to die because Johnny was gone. And finally, Pony Boy finds Johnny's letter. After Johnny dies, the nurse gave Pony Boy the copy of Gone with the Wind that Johnny wanted him to have. When he finally feels like he's ready to read it, he picks it up and the letter falls out. The letter was from Johnny, saying that Johnny didn't mind dying because it was worth saving those kids. After reading the letter, Pony Boy knew what to write about for the theme his teacher, Mr. Syme, assigned him. And if you haven't guessed enough, it is The Outsider. novel we have three main themes our first theme is class conflict see much of the action in the outsiders is created by class conflict depending on which side you live would in general define your identity your background and the people you hang out with 14 year old narrator pony boy pony boy's gang the greasers come from the financially struggling east side while the rival gang the socials come from the wealthy west side these two groups are trapped in a battle where there is no winner. Next, we have loyalty. According to Pony Boy, loyalty is the thread that holds the gang together. It cuts across their differences, since they know each other well, faced hard times together, and have grown up together. They're loyal to each other. See, in this case of the Curtis boys, they, are, they have loyalty because they're brothers, and orphan brothers at that. The novel explores what happens when Pony Boy and his oldest brother begins to lose this loyalty for one another under the strain of their lives. And finally, a big, big theme we have is education. See, the novel also focuses on injustice in educational opportunities due to economic and social factors. Both of Pony Boy's older brothers have had to limit their education in order to work and support their family. But it's not all that bad. 
See, Mr. Syme doesn't see things in Social vs. Greaser. He acknowledges Ponyboy's talent and takes into consideration all the trauma Ponyboy has been through and how this might impact his performance in school. The Outsiders is set in 1965 because, as C. Hinton says so in the FAQ page of her website, but not because there is any indication in the novel itself. What's also revealed in her FAQ page is the setting is based on her hometown where she was living when she wrote the story as a high school student. So why is Ponyboy so vague about time and place? Maybe because he's trying to connect and communicate with hundreds of boys living on the wrong side of their hometown. This isn't about Tulsa only, it could be your hometown too. The different settings in the book we see are the park where Johnny killed Bob and where they got jumped. Next we have Pony Boy, Pony Boy's house where copious events occur, including him getting slapped by his brother, older brother. Next we have the train which Pony and Boy ride out of town to get to the abandoned church. Then we have the hospital where Johnny died and where Pony Boy and Dally stay after getting hurt. We also have Windricksville where Johnny and Pony Boy travel to hide from the police and where the children were saved from the burning church. We also have Buck Merrill's house where Dally gave Pony Boy and Johnny the money, gun, and sweatshirt. And lastly, we have the empty lot where the rumble took place and where Johnny got beat up before the novel, and which is also the greasers' hangout spot. So, the historical context. We actually are, in terms of the novel, we're actually in the middle of the time of the civil rights movement. Now because of this, S.E. Hinton keeps things mostly white. In other words, there were only white greasers and socks. And now for the time context, the entire story happened for about two weeks and a semester from Tuesday. Bob, then Johnny, followed by Dally are the characters that die in that order. And then, number three, Derry had only hit Ponyboy once in his life, which is what caused the rest of the events to happen. And that's always something to think about. If Derry controlled himself and did not slap Ponyboy, wouldn't the rest of the events not occur? And finally, once the Curtis parents dies, Soda Pop drops out of school to support the family, just like Derry. We're going to be talking about if I recommend this book or not, and out of five, what star rating I would give it. Would I recommend this book? There is extreme violence in this book, from the vividly described rumble, to fire that severely injures a main character, to Ponyboy getting slapped and jumped. There is, however, some educational value, since pieces like Gone with the Wind and Nothing Can Stay by Robert Frost inspires readers to check out these pieces. Pony Boy's character conveys to the reader that reading is cool, which may also influence reading. Even though Greaser is always engaged in minor crimes, he avoids that behavior. He is loyal to his friends. He is open enough to see through Cherry that not all socks are alike, and a savior to some kids in danger. He's also an exceptional reader and not afraid to show it. That right there shows the reader positive role models so, out of 5, I would give this book a 5 out of 5, as I know sensible readers will not mind this one. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you liked this video and learned something, make sure to hit that like button. Also, consider subscribing as I give recent uh, analysis of the books that I do. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a nice day.